What's up everybody, Nathan Larson here with another video for you home studio artists, those of y'all who are writing and recording your own music at home. And in this video, I'm showing you how I created an entire project using nothing but stock plugins and stock MIDI instruments in Logic Pro. So I decided to create an entire project where I was gonna limit myself to only use stock instruments in Logic and stock plugins in Logic and see what would happen. And to be completely honest with you, this was a super, super fun project to do. And so I'm gonna be doing an entire session breakdown in this video showing you basically how I produce this whole thing with nothing but the built-in tools in Logic. And I do wanna say, I do have a lot of third-party plugins. I've spent quite a lot of money over the last 12 years on my studio. I don't think it's terrible to upgrade. In fact, I think buying you know, something like the Native Instruments Complete Ultimate Package is actually a really good investment. It's probably one of the best investments that I made. And I made that investment when I was probably 19 years old, and to this day, I still love it and I still use it all the time. But the main point is here, if you're new or if you've been doing this maybe a little while, but you just haven't really spent a ton of money on your studio, your ability to make great music has so much more to do with your songwriting, with your arrangement, with your ability to be musical, has less to do with the equipment that you have. So do not buy into the trap that if you don't spend a ton of money on your studio, you can't make great music. And I really hope that this video, by the end of it, that will have demonstrated that. So with that said, let's jump into Logic. Oh, and make sure to subscribe if you like this video. Okay, so now that we are in Logic, this is what the session looks like. Don't be too intimidated. It looks like there's a lot happening, which there is. I'll break it down here in just a little bit. But just so you guys know what we're looking at before I play it, we've got all of our vocals here on the top. And then we've got our keys, pads, kind of in this area here. All of this brown, all these brown tracks, these are all strings. And then we've got some bass stuff down here. And then we've got all of our percussion at the very bottom. That's how I usually have my sessions mapped out. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and play this for you. And uh, again, every single thing you hear in this, is Logic only. Plugins, sounds, literally right out of Logic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play this for you uh, up through the first verse, maybe through the interlude, we'll see, and then I'll stop it and we'll actually start kind of breaking this down. This time I was searching for a reason you closed the open door. I thought we were going so steady, we were moving, but lately you were showing me, baby, you're not really here. All this time I thought you were mine. Okay, we can always take a look at other sections here in a little bit, but let's just start with this. You have the general idea. The main thing here is that when you decide, hey, I'm gonna limit myself, I'm only gonna use what I have access to here within Logic, which is what I did when I approached this. So I knew going in, I'm only gonna use what I have available in Logic. And you know, what's funny about it is that this became a very large production pretty quickly. And there's so much in Logic that works super well that this, it was never a problem. Like it was never like, oh man, like I don't have this, I don't have that. It was always just, hey, how can I creatively use what I have here to make work, to make what I have work, right? And so this whole thing started with this sound right here. So that was it. So I wrote the, the lead vocal, the melody, I wrote the melody and the lyrics and everything literally just with this 
at the scratch track, basically these, the delayed mallets, I found it just, I don't even remember where it was. I just basically went in here, went to synthesizer, percussive, and there you go, abstract mallets. This is just straight out of the gate. And then I threw on some delay and then I sent this to some reverb. Yeah, that was literally it. And then I have a couple different pianos here. One's just a little more of a delay and high reverb. Listen. And then we've got this plucky synth. And the harder you hit it, kind of adds some white noise at the top, gives a little bit of a punch. And then I knew I wanted to have live strings as well. So all of these, all of this in here, this is actually live strings. Just listen to this. So that is not sampled. That was one string player that I brought in who plays both violin and viola. Violin one, and then you got viola. I did two viola parts, three violin parts. If you wanna see how I did all this, I do have an entire video where I show how to make one string player sound like an orchestra, like this. And then I layered that in with this. These are string samples from Logic Pro to Studio Strings, which I have a video on that as well. So let's just listen to that. So this is really subtle. You can hear the cello a little bit more, and then all that together sounds like this. Really awesome. And then, uh, just so you guys know, I EQ'd, I just rolled off a lot of that top end, and that basically gave it a lot more of that mellow, kind of muted tone. So this is what it would sound like without, without that EQ on it. and then with the EQ. So it really just takes off a lot of that top end, the scratchiness, it makes it sound like it's muted, which is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want this to get in the way of the lead vocal here. All this time I was searching for. Especially since this is really low in Anna's register, uh, my vocalist, I really wanted her voice to still pop out. I didn't want those strings to be kind of getting in the way of that vocal. Okay. All the percussion stuff, this is just, again, all of this is from, from what we have built right into Logic. Um, the main thing is, is just adding lots of layers to make everything bigger. So I have two different instances of kicks. Um, I have this, it's called kick high and then kick low. So just listen to the kick high by itself. Open door. So it's kind of got that really top end, pew, pew kind of sound. And then here's the low one. And then together, sounds like this. So you get a little bit of that hard, nice attack from the high one, and you get more of that low end from the low one. And I think I might even bump that up. And so I think, as, as I mentioned, this is not mixed. This is not all the way done. So everything you have here, I'm still considering potentially sending this off to a mixing engineer just to really get a second set of ears on it. But this is already sounding really good. There we go. So that's with a little bit higher. And then uh, we've got the snares. I have a splashy snare and a smashy spl uh, snare. That's splashy. Here's the smashy one. It's got a little more of a harsher attack on it. And that's what it sounds like together. And so now all of our percussion, all of our percussion sounds like this. and then with everything together. And then I've got the hi-hat. There that is. And it's just like, I just found sounds that I liked. I didn't even manipulate them too much. All these effects and stuff like that on here, I don't really think I did a whole ton. I think with some of the uh, snares, yeah, I think I might have added some compression to give that give it a little bit more of that punch and splash. And then what I did is I bounced down both of these snares into audio, and then I reversed them, so then you get this, which gives us this sound. Give it, right? You can do the same thing with kick, 
and that is the percussion. There you go. The bass the sounds that we've got here. Just kind of a, a, you know, kind of a, it doesn't even have a lot of low end. It's just got a little bit of presence. This is just alchemy. Again, I just found a preset I liked, probably tweaked it a little bit, but then I'm not the guy that's like, let me spend 30 minutes just tweaking the snot out of this plugin or, or sample or synth or whatever to make it sound like super crazy. You know, my thought is I want to write stuff that is really compelling and then find sounds that work. And then I've got this art. This is also alchemy. And this is what this sounds like, this bass art. And that's what gives a ton of that motion here. Listen to how much motion this gives us. I thought we were going so steady, we were moving, but lately you were showing me, baby, you're not really here. I actually don't know why I don't, why did I roll that off? Interesting. I don't really know why I had that EQ on, or maybe it was already just on the preset. I don't really know. I don't really want that though. I want the top end. <laughs> Yeah. So from just an arrangement perspective, notice that I took the strings out when this came in. We don't have any strings. All the strings dropped out. That just allows a little more space. And then um, we have this stuff going on in the keyboards. It's all doing the same basic kind of pattern. Just that arpeggio, which, yeah, it's just outlining the chords. A, it's an A minor chord. That's all it is. And then we've got the vocals. And so let's talk a bit about the vocal production here, because um, we have this really cool deal here. So the way I did that, oh, door, I think I took the word open and the, door, the word door, so oh, door, and then cut it. And then what I did here, as you can see in the vocal chain, took out all the low end, boosted a little bit of the highs, um, compressed it a lot, added some stereo delay, added a chorus effect. Uh, let's see, what did I send here? Oops. So reverb, another reverb and then a spreader with a delay. And then what I did here is you can open this up and you can see in flex pitch, I cranked up the formant to 366, uh, I think, yeah. And then this one's even higher. And then it gives you that cool sound and that's it. Like it's really that simple. Just chop that vocal up, throw on some more processing to it, um, delay reverb, and then that's how that sounds. And then I did these octave. Let's just listen to the vocals here alone. This vo these two tracks here is the melody up an octave and then panned hard left, hard right. I thought we were going so steady. We were moving, but lately you were showing me, baby, you're not really here. And then it cuts out for not really here. And then I added this vocal throw here. We're not really here. Not really here. Not really here. Not and that is basically just, you would take a delay and um, yeah. So I just took that same audio that I knew I wanted to, wanted to have that delay. You drop it in here, you turn the dry signal all the way down and then you turn the wetness up and then you, yeah, you just need to determine what you want uh, the rhythm to be of that delay. And then we had this little vocal chop here. So same kind of idea here, just chop that vocal up I formant shifted the crap out of it just to give it that really crazy kind of sound. So this is what it would sound like with no formant shift at all. Which I don't even know what I pulled that from. I know that was mine. Mama mine, mama mine. You are mine. Yeah, I think it was like not like thought, thought, mama mine. And then again, just add the added these effects on here to give it that really kind of crazy sound. 
And then the chorus, all this vocal production here, uh, we've got d uh, doubles here. So these these three here, this is all duplica uh, not duplicated. I had her track at separate times. Next time, I won't fall for you. So baby, don't come right back. And so the way that you would make it that clean, I do have a video on vocal editing and how to double vocals. You can check that out. But you would basically align all the rhythms. You can do it manually. That's how I do it. So you don't have to use a plugin, but you can use plugins like Vocaline to do that as well. And then I had the octave down. Next time, I won't fall. And obviously that one is a lot more processed. I have actually the pitch correction, so like auto-tune on that. And then I just pitched it down using flex pitch. I just took, you can see the audio here is the exact same audio. And then I duplicated that, panned it, and then used formant shifting to change the tonal characteristic. And then that allows us to duplicate the same thing with different formants, which basically is gonna give you the ability to duplicate that without having any phasing problems. So all of this together sounds like this. Next time, I won't fall for you. And in the context of everything. Next time, I won't fall for you. So baby, don't come running back. And then we have that harmony there. Running back. And so we've got that going there. So it just as far as this whole thing goes, if you are just using Logic, you just need to realize that so much of this stuff, it has way less to do with what plugins you own, way less to do with what samples you own, has way more to do with your creative ability to arrange your creative ability to know how to do things production wise. Like none of this stuff is mixing. It's not, this is all production. This is all producing. And so before you get wrapped up into the idea that, you know, you, if only you could mix better, it's like, sure. I'm, I mean, I'm using EQ compression, these types of things on this. But at the end of the day, um, if you just know how to do some basic EQ, basic compression, delay, and reverb, I mean, those are the main tools that I'm using on this. And so you don't even, like most of these samples that I'm using that are all logic, I just kind of am playing them out of the box. I'm not really manipulating the, the crap out of them or anything like that. So here's what we got just going on keyboard wise in the chorus. So I've got the arpeggio, dun, 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 dun. I've got just chords going on in piano, and then I've got this little lead line, counter line, dun, 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 dun. Which that in itself does not sound like fantastic. That's not a great piano sound, but in the context of everything, It's just, you know, I, it sounds just fine in the context here. And so don't get too wrapped up in what plugin samples you have. Of course, would this sound better with, uh, you know, like the giant, like native instruments or something like that? Yeah, I mean, sure it would. But I, I still am really happy with how this whole thing sounds. And then just good writing. Um, I don't wanna just pat myself on the back, but just good writing and arranging um, makes a huge difference. And so then we'll go ahead and take a look at this interlude and then we'll jump to a couple other places I wanna mention and we'll move on. So let's talk about this. Um, vocals, um, you know, I've got that whole octave thing going on again. I think all this time. So actually, that's du du uh, just doubled there. 
I just love that sound so much. And then it goes up the octave. I know you were close to me, baby. You were close to me, too. But then the other one's down the octave. And then that vocal throw again. Somebody else. Somebody else. I think that it's time for you to go. And then had the octaves go up there. So just as far as vocal production goes, doing different things. We started out this whole thing doubled, then octaves, and then going up in unison again, doubled, but this time up the octave. So doing things that create dynamic motion throughout this entire production to keep you, like it just pushes the whole thing forward, keeps you wanting to continue listening. Now we gotta talk about this riser effect here. It's so dope. It's Okay, so we've got a couple different things that are doing this. The main thing is strings. This is literally having my string player just like play these crazy, like just gliss. <laughs> just a lot of layers of that, which I'll bounce this all down to just one audio file um, here down, uh, you know, when I'm getting ready to actually like straight up mix this thing. And then I've got these two little risers going on here, um, which here's what they sound like. Just playing that on the MIDI keyboard. I just found these in the transition or whatever the heck it was. Yeah. Synthesizer arrangement effects and just bite, I don't know, just risers. And then I, uh, play those out for a while and then I bounce them down to audio and then you can see what I came up with. And that's it. And then. Okay, so then vocal production is very similar, but I do add an additional harmony here that is new listen I'm right for you. so baby don't come right back no one ever take you back it's just adding an additional element there to make it differentiated from the other portions so this is just good arranging is each section even if it's the same music should have something that kind of draws your ear to it it should not just be a copy paste um, I mean, a lot of it is copy paste, but not everything. And I'm doing new things. I've got these little gang vocal hits here or moments here. That's what this sounds like. This is really subtle, but just adds a little element there. The strings, I've got the strings playing. And again, I have a whole video on this if you wanna see how I actually layered this all up, but I've got these um, strings layered live and uh, digital. Here's what the arrangement sounds string wise. I'll add the percussion and bass and stuff. So pretty basic, just outlining those chords, a little bit of motion, nothing too crazy. Got that bass. Dun, 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 just did that. Yeah, I just love that. I love Alchemy for that. Alchemy has some really good bass arp, uh, like bass arps. All right, and then we go uh, from that chorus to this. So then there, 
Uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty basic stuff. I mean, nothing really too crazy other than just the writing is a little different. Obviously, I bring things down and make things more dynamic. And that's one of the big things I think is just good production and good producing is dynamic. It goes somewhere interesting at every single section. Um, so obviously, we've got some more stuff happening with the strings. Once the vocals come in here um, on the second half of this. I know. just doubles the melody, which just reinforces that. It sounds really good. Um, and then of course we start adding a little bit more of these other elements. We'll solo out the strings and everything down below that in the low end. Here we go. Okay, so that's what we've got going on there. Um, I added these little, I don't even know, just I called them clicks. I mean, is this, I don't know. I don't even know where I found them, just somewhere in the percussion stuff. And I just wanted something to kind of get that da 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 as well going on to just add a little bit of that rhythm yeah and then i took this low bass thing It's just got some good motion to it. Again, I just found this in Alchemy, and then I've got that really cool. Just the bow. And I mean, when this comes to, to time to mix, I mean, I'm gonna wanna bring that out. So this this is like gonna be more like this. this oh. So, I mean, I'd probably literally like crank that up, so. Maybe even add some distortion or something to that to bow, and then probably even maybe bounce that down to audio, and then slow it down, bow, so it drops like that. That'd be super sweet. So I might still have to just do that now that I just thought of that. And then um, the last chorus here is pretty similar, but we've got more going on with the strings. Just listen to the string arrangement here. Boom. So um, this is kind of a side note. This little outro here, the string arrangement is actually uh, ripping from a different composition that I created several years ago. Um, I wrote a string quartet piece that was, I mean, literally just for string quartet um, back when I was in the university. And uh, this was the intro or not the intro, but the, the very beginning of this literally, it was just like a more of a neoclassical thing. So this is something I like doing is taking things that I've written from other songs and then like kind of interjecting like, oh yeah, like this is actually from a different piece I wrote. Gives it that opening up sound all unison and they kind of all spread out and then open up to that A minor chord or whatever chord that is. Uh, I don't remember. But yeah, so this is the whole production, guys. As far as everything else going on effects-wise, I mean, really, the the only things that I've got going, it's it's just some, you know, the EQ, compression, reverb, delay. I, I again, not totally sure if I'm going to mix this or if I'm going to send this off to someone else to do just to get a second set of ears on it. If I did send it to someone else, obviously, then I've got to make the decision on what I want to print out, what I don't want to print. There are definitely things that I need to 
kind of condense like all these strings. Like I need to put that all together um, into one track instead of, you know, 15 or however many it is. But you can see the whole idea here. The principle is when you're limited, you have to be creative in different ways. And hopefully this really goes to show you that even using stock plugins, stock instruments, you can find a way to still make great music. I think this is a really good production. Personally, obviously you can disagree, that's fine. But I'm really happy with how this whole thing sounds. And this isn't even 100% done yet. Um, so happy with the performance, happy with the writing, happy with the direction of the arrangement. And that matters so much more than how much money you throw at expensive plugins and expensive samples. If you cannot make great music with just like logic, do not fall into the trap that you will then be able to make great music just because you spend a few thousand dollars on extra stuff. It doesn't work that way. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you click that like button, hit subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And let me know what you think. Drop me a comment. I'd love to hear what you think about how this whole thing went. And uh, maybe this is something you guys could do. Just try limiting yourself with what you can do and see what comes out of it. We'll see you in the next video.